So hey there guys, Erin here again, another video. Today I'm gonna to be giving you five tips for optimizing your health, taking it to the next level. You know, not only beyond keto and not only beyond optimized keto, but just optimized health in general and just things that you wanna kind of take into consideration as you move forward on your health journey. The first thing is to sweat regularly. Sweating is actually kind of the same as going to the bathroom. It's a way that your body eliminates some of the toxins and different things in your body that you just don't need. And so you wanna make sure that you're doing something that gets you sweaty at least several times a week. I try to go for at least six days a week of getting sweaty so that way I'm eliminating things that I just don't want in my system. And as I get sweaty, I make sure to wipe the sweat away as it is produced because it will just sit on your skin and get reabsorbed and so you don't wanna do that. And when you wipe the sweat away, it causes your body to sweat more so you're able to get more out. So if you're doing exercise and you're getting sweaty, Make sure you have a towel handy in order to kind of wipe yourself throughout the process. If you are doing things like saunaing or hot baths in order to sweat, make sure you have a towel ready in order to eliminate or remove all that sweat that is on your skin because you will sweat more and you'll be able to be more efficient in your kind of sweatiness. Kind of gross, but it's something to kind of remind yourself that it's important to make sure you're doing everything to kind of get that away from your skin and that you're producing more sweat so that you're able to eliminate more of the toxins in your body. The other thing to do kind of in conjunction with that is to make sure you're drinking enough water. On keto, you do not retain um, water the way you would if you're running on glucose, and so you wanna make sure that you are replenishing your water sources regularly. At a minimum, make sure that you're getting half your body weight in ounces of water per day. That's just gonna help to support your system. We are made of like 80% water, and so we really need to make sure that we've got enough water in there. Dehydration is a very scary thing, and you wanna make sure that you're avoiding it, especially if you're trying to sweat things out. So make sure that you're drinking enough water water and that you're drinking water regularly. If you are feeling thirsty, drink. Drink regularly and drink often. Sometimes we can mistake thirst as hunger and so try drinking a glass of water if you feel bored or you feel like you need to eat something because you maybe just really need water. The other thing that is amazing with water is that it helps to aid in our digestion. It helps to kind of support our digestive system. When our food or what we ate gets into our small and large intestines, it uses water in order to extract extract the various minerals or nutrients that we need from it. So we need to make sure that we are drinking enough water in order to support that system. And speaking of that system, my, uh, what am I on here? My third tip is to eat things like fermented vegetables, take a daily um, digestive enzyme or probiotic. Supporting really good gut health will help you to establish the right kind of uh, atmosphere in your gut in order to get all those nutrients out of it. I personally take a daily probiotic. Um, I will also take digestive enzymes if I'm eating something that maybe needs a little bit more assistance as far as breaking it down. I also regularly eat things like fermented vegetables, sauerkraut, fermented pickles. The thing with this is you wanna buy products that have live cultures in it so that way you are getting real bacteria if you're going to your grocery store and you're like oh i'll just pick up some pickles that's you know a fermented food or i'll get the jar of sauerkraut that's sitting on the shelf you want to buy these products in the refrigerated section in order for there to be real live bacteria in it it has to be refrigerated otherwise that bacteria dies and really what you're buying when you buy it from the dry section is just pickled products, which is fine, but you're not getting any of those fermented vegetable, fermented food benefits. It needs to be refrigerated in order for those cultures to kind of stay alive. So that way when you eat them, they get into your body. So I will regularly um, eat fermented foods in order to kind of establish and maintain that good gut bacteria, as well as taking things like a regular probiotic or digestive enzymes as I'm eating and consuming my foods. The other interesting little tidbit that I recently learned, and I didn't know that I was getting this benefit, from my fermented foods is that if you are worried about things like glyphosate, um, which is like the Roundup Ready uh, material in your food, Eating fermented vegetables can also help to detoxify and remove those things from your body. So incorporating that, if you are eating things that may potentially have glyphosate, fermented vegetables help you to naturally remove that and kind of kill that off as it goes through your system. So 
lots of benefits there. So something you should definitely consider to incorporate into your diet as you go forward on keto. The fourth thing is to make sure that you are getting all the nutrients you need in. And this includes things like electrolytes as well as various vitamins and minerals. So for me personally, I am always low on my potassium and so I have to supplement that in there and I do take a daily potassium supplement. Um, for a while I was low on my magnesium but I've figured out ways in order to get that in just through my diet and so I no longer need to supplement this. But I was supplementing this regularly in the beginning on keto because I was low. Very important to make sure that you're getting your electrolytes in there so that way you're able to maintain the right kind of balance. Um, it's very critical in order to support all the different functions within your body and you lose these electrolytes quickly on keto because you're not retaining water, which is why you need to drink water, and they're just kind of flushing out of your body. And so make sure that you're bringing them in in order to maintain that balance. The other thing for me, and based on where I live and the fact that I live in a very northern climate and it's cloudy most of the time this year, I'm not getting the same sun exposure I would get in the summertime, is vitamin D. I just add a couple of drops of this into my morning coffee. I really 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 like my um, vitamin d product it's d3 which is the one that you want to make sure you're getting um, d2 is not as absorbable by the body and it's d3 that we're really in need of within our bodies especially with our kind of modern diets and our modern food quality so you want to make sure that you're getting vitamin d3 in there and any other mineral or vitamin that you are deficient of as you go forward with your diet. If you're kind of deficient across the board, find a good multivitamin that works for you. There's a lot out there that are low carb and are you know affordable and have good products in them or good quality ingredients in them. So my last tip is to establish a good sleep routine. This is gonna allow you to fall asleep quicker and get into more restful sleep. It's very important that you focus on sleep and that you work towards making sure you're getting at least eight hours of sleep every night. This is just the time when your body relaxes. If you're working out, this is the time when your tissues are repaired so that way you know new muscle is built, whatever kind of impact you put on your muscle is repaired as you sleep. Your digestion also does a lot of work while you're sleeping and then your skin also repairs itself from the day. That's why a lot of beauty companies will try to sell you night creams. So sleep is very vital and it can be kind of hard to fall in that rested state. So these are the things that I do in order to allow myself to fall asleep more quickly so that way I get as much sleep as I possibly can each night. About an hour before I go to sleep, I start to kind of focus on the fact that I need to start winding down. I try to remove any tasks that I need to do before bedtime. I try to get them done before that hour. I just wanna make sure that that hour before I go to sleep is one where I'm focusing on relaxing and kind of just resting my body down so that way I get into that state. I also do the same routine every single night. Just lets my body know that I'm getting wound down, I'm going to be going to sleep now, and that is what we're moving towards next. So for my sleep routine, I take a hot shower before bed. This allows me the ability to kind of relax my body after a stressful day, and then it also removes the need to shower in the morning, which removes the kind of object of tasks that you need to complete in the morning. After I shower, I will do my skincare routine. I do a lot of oils and essential oils that have natural calming effects. So I will do lavender based products. So that way I'm kind of breathing in that kind of calming vibe that you get from lavender. Eucalyptus is another good one if you don't like the scent of lavender. After I kind of do all that, I will do any kind of packing I need to do for the next day. So if I'm going to work or if I've got some sort of tasks that I need to do in the morning, I will get everything set up. This just removes any kind of stressors that I have you know, in the morning of, oh, you have to get up and do this. Before you go in the morning, make sure you get this done. I try to have all those things laid out so that way my decision making in the morning is already decided and it's just part of that kind of calm down hour. During this time, I'm also wearing things like my blue light blocking glasses. This helps to kind of block all the blue light that is around me and it makes it so my body starts to naturally produce melatonin. When when you are exposed to blue light, it stops the production of melatonin. So by wearing blue light blocking glasses, my brain starts to naturally 
start to produce that because it's not getting exposed to all the blue light that's in my house. The other thing that I will do is I will go into my room, which has a red base light. Because there's no blue light in this, this allows me to slowly kind of fall into that slumber. So while I'm brushing my teeth, I've got a red light on. I might read before bed, but I try to avoid devices right before bed and just kind of get into that calming atmosphere. The other thing that I will do is I will use a little bit more essential oils and I will spray a lavender based room spray into my room as well as a fabric spray in order to have that scent around where I'm sleeping so that way I'm breathing that in. The other thing that I will do is if I'm having a very hard time relaxing I will take something like a melatonin based supplement to fall asleep. I don't do this regularly. Um, well, taking a melatonin supplement is not habit forming. It does kind of bring in the melatonin instead of making it so your body is naturally producing it. So it's something that I do not as often as some people do. I do it more out of a desperate need for, for some melatonin. Turn off my ring light now is it is middle of the day right now and it's pretty dark in here, especially if I turn this off as well. It's pretty dark. Um, the light that you're seeing is from my bathroom, which is on the other side, and I luckily have that door open, but if I closed it, it would almost be, you, you wouldn't be able to see me. And the reason why is because I have blackout drapes on my windows, and this prevents any of the moonlight, the street light, cars driving by, all that light from coming in and waking me up. This just kind of creates what I would call the dark kind of cave experience, where you're in the dark, you're gonna get the optimal amount of melatonin being created and you're not gonna be distracted by outside light. If you are unable to put in blackout drapes, you could always buy a blackout mask. I like this one because it's got a pillow at the bottom and it goes right along my nose so that no light comes in. So when I'm traveling or I'm staying in a hotel, I use one of these masks and I find that it doesn't really feel like anything. It doesn't really you know, distract from my ability to sleep. It just feels kind of like a nice soft pillow. So sleep out masks are a good way to block out light if you are unable to put up drapes or if you're in an environment where you can't block out the light. Really going back, you really wanna just establish a pre-sleep routine. Something that kind of allows you to calmly complete any tasks that you would need in the morning. Something that focuses on the start of relaxation and winding down for the evening. You don't wanna go from an abrupt task to bed. That's, you know, something you really want to try to avoid. If you can't do an hour, try to make it a 15 minute routine. Try to make it a 20 minute routine. Just try to make some sort of routine pre-bed that is the same and that's consistent and it kind of just lets your body know that we are moving to sleep and that is the next task. If you really want to get basic, that is the sleep advice that we're given as parents in order to help our kids fall asleep. Establish a sleep routine. That way they know what's coming next. Even as an adult, do the same thing with your body and that's going to get you to a better state of sleep. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you found these tips to be helpful uh, for kind of optimizing your health on your keto journey and just kind of optimizing your health in general. They're just really good tips to keep in mind. You know, you need to focus on your sleep, good gut health, and then kind of just eliminating all the toxins and stuff from your body and making sure that you're getting enough of your vitamins and minerals in there. There's a lot to balance and eating a ketogenic diet can make it very easy in order to kind of make sure that you're getting the right nutrients in there as long as you're eating a very balanced keto diet. To me, that is a diet where you are eating good vegetables, good sources of meat, and then good clean sources of fat, and you're doing it regularly and consistently throughout your week. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.